Oh, hello, and welcome to, well, the first officer who's really sort of kind of random. And as I said, possibly one I might actually have dinner with, Raphael de Corton, who is, well, he's the Italian chief of naval staff. And this is possibly going to be one of the cheat uh, quickest videos that I do, uh, do in this series. And I'm going to therefore start off by taking a little time saying hello. Now, welcome to a little bit of a new look because I'm first time I'm wearing one of the t-shirts from Spreadshirt. I have been wearing my hat, but this is the t-shirt. And I quite like this one. So as you all know, if you've been watching the multiple series going out, I currently have a competition going with my aunt, the same one who bet me about a thousand, uh, again, to a thousand subscribers. She has put forward that there is no chance for me to double my subscribers by December 31st, 2021, from when she said it, which would mean I'd have to reach 13,000 subscribers. Now, I'm already at about 6,600, so thank you very much to all of you who have pushed me up. I've over 100 since this competition began. Thank you. I need to do a bit more because it's for family or bragging rights. And also, she'll be wearing, from the Spreadshirt range, a lovely Blackburn Blackburn face mask. And my uncle. And they will take a picture of themselves wearing these face masks. And it will be go up on January 2nd. So. Please. Familiar bragging rights. If you can help me reach 13,000 subscribers by December 31st, 2021, that would be very, very kind of you. Thank you. And so on to Raphael de Corton, who is, as I already said, one of the more interesting characters, I find, because he joins the Naval Academy in 1906. He graduates in 1910. He serves on Vittorio Emanuel and Benedita Brin battleships. And then joins the Naval Air Arm just before World War I. Um, he was captured uh, during the bombardment of Pula uh, from the uh, airship City of the Jersey and remained, remained a prisoner of Austro Hungarian Army till 1917. 1917. He was then, after war, assigned to the naval staff, commanded a flotilla of destroyers and submarines, and from 1933 to 36 was naval attache in Germany. He was promoted to Contra Admiral in 1938. When Italy joined the war in 1940, uh, Corten commanded um, 7th Division in which he participated during the First Battle of Cert, then was moved to 8th Division and participated in the Operation Vigorous, well, the successful part of it. He was promoted, uh, he was decorated with a silver medal of military valor at that point. Uh, when Benettino Mussolini is deposed, Corton becomes Minister of Navy replacing Arturo Riccardi as Chief of Staff of the, uh, uh, of, of the Italian Navy at the same time. So he combines both roles. When Casavale is announced, that's the Armistice, um, he convinces Carlo Bergami, the fleet commander, to comply the clauses and not to scuttle the ships. And then he joins the King and Prime Minister, Bergoglio, in their flight to Brindisi. On In September 1943, he meets... Corten and, Admiral, uh, Corten and Admiral Andrew Cunningham, hence Cunningham's picture here, meet at Toronto and uh, agree a gentleman's agreement, in true British style, which defined the collaboration of the Ranger Marina with the Allies. He remains Minister until 1946 and Chief Staff until December 1946. Well, July 1946, Minister and Chief Staff until December 1946, when he resigns in protest at the clauses on the Paris Peace Treaties. From 52 to 59, was all, he was president of Lloyd Trestino, um, which is, well, how do I put this? Italian transport shipping company. He does quite well. He's 
a fairly nice, fairly decent officer. There are probably some issues with him, but he has an interesting war. He takes part in Operation Cheese, Operation Vigorous, and the First Battle of Cert. He acquits himself well. There is nothing about this officer which is odious, really, particularly. What it should be said, and he finishes up, of course, an Amiralia di Squadra, or Admiral sort of things. And Lieutenant Admiral in terms of that, but Admiral in terms of equivalent lead, equivalents to uh, other navies. And he is, how do I put this politely? He's good at his job. He's an example of the competency that was available in the Italian Navy and the Regia Marina, which wasn't used in World War One, uh, uh, World War Two, and thankful really for the Allies because if the Regia Marina had been led by its more competent officers rather than the political officers, uh, and especially in the years prepping to World War Two, and had been organised by them, then whilst I'm I, I, I'm not really doubtful about the eventual victory. It would have been far more costly for the Allies, the Mediterranean. It would have been far more of a battle. Uh, if you're noticing, I'm slightly lopsided. Um, that's because I am patting a fluffy research assistant who is being very demanding on this front. Yes, you are. But he's a good officer. So what have we got coming up? Of course, Raphael de Cordon is the last of the Italian chiefs of staff. At this point, the Italy's joining the Allies. Always a good move for them to change sides. And they, they carry on. They try and help as much as they can. And there's an interesting what if in life, which is if you don't have nuclear weapons used on Japan, do you end up with things like the Italian Navy maybe going out to help in the Pacific? And in which case, the memory and the, Par uh, the uh, treaties of Paris, etc., could have been very, very different if you needed the Italian Navy in the Pacific. And we can sit there and go, no, 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 that would mean more supplies, more logistics, and all these things. It would have been all those things, but if you are trying to maintain a blockade and support of the forces ashore if you have to make an invasion of Japan and as much as we might talk about it not ever having to be necessary and Japan will concede and all these things there is also every chance that they don't uh, there are some better angels and there is a good reason you write uh, the history that is written as it is that you know it would have probably not carried on and therefore maybe the nuclear weapons weren't necessary but there is just a strong possibility it might have there are a few moments where it could have gone either way with japan where even the nuclear weapons might not have stopped them fight carrying on fighting and you're left with a scenario. What what are you going to get, do? Are you going to end up in a permanent, perpetual war? We've all seen how that's worked out with North Korea. And that's a slightly different scenario. Let's be honest, North Korea is a far more manageable scenario than a similar situation with Japan. So, yeah, at a certain point, uh, there are some interesting flicks of history here, because these two, it's doubtful Cunningham would have ever been deployed out to the Far East. Fraser was sent to be the diplomatic head. Vian and other officers were sent to run the British Pacific Fleet and fight the British Pacific Fleet out there. But... There's every chance you could have ended up with an Italian Navy squadron 
the Floyd out as part of the operations. Interesting what if to go down. No, what have we got coming up? Well, the Chiefs of Staff of the Exodus Navies are going to possibly continue to the 23rd because I've been debating about various officers being involved and so that will happen that could well happen and the 23rd of September patron and the 26th of September brew ships I think I might end up having to move that change that brew ships on the 26th of September to something else I might end up having to change that to one of the Patrons, because we've had a tie for second place. We have had a tie. And that's always fun when you have a tie. And I will be, as I said, working that one through. So, what else we got coming up? 2nd of October, HMS Dreadnought Day. I still am enjoying the submissions of favourite dreadnoughts and battleships and battle cruisers. For that day, it's going to be an interesting chance to go for it. It's going to be a fun chance to go for it. And um, I'm possibly going to end up having to move the 8th of October. I'm possibly going to have to do it because, or I might be able to do it on the 7th of October. There's going to be something moving around because I've got to go do some filming in. Portsmouth, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Right, thank you very much, everyone. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, take care.